Hello, this is Dr. Dennis Hartlieb, and welcome to Cosmodent's Tip of the Month, the aesthetic seal of the implant crown screw access hole. This is a patient that was referred to me that had three implant crowns that were incompletely sealed or incompletely fitted on the implant abutments. You can see on the first photograph how there was actually adjustment of the bite, adjustment of the occlusion, and the dentist actually had to grind all the way through the porcelain into the metal of the crown. The second photo shows a little guide that I used to create access and guide me to be able to get to the screws. After the crowns were removed and the implant abutment crown interfaces were sealed, then the crowns were placed back and torqued with new gold screws. So one of the challenges that we have in dentistry is when we do these implant crown access hole seals, very often the restorations end up being very low in value, kind of gray when we get done. So the technique we're going to share with you today is how to block out that grayness and have highly valued, nice color aesthetic restorations for the screw access holes. So the first thing that I'm going to use when I to block out that darkness inside the crown is gutta percha. I like using gutta percha for several reasons. It's a good sealer, as we know from our root canal treatments. It's highly visible for retreatment, so if, to, if I have to remove the composite, it's easy for me to see when I'm getting through the composite into the gutta percha. It's very easy to remove for retreatment, but most importantly, it's going to opaque out the metal and raise the value in the internal aspect of the crown. I like the orangey pink color of this gutta percha because it's going to make it easier for me to opaque and block out that low value. Now, ideally, I'd like to have about two millimeters of occlusal space after that gutter perch is placed. So typically, that'll bring me to about the metal rim beneath the porcelain. So you can see in the photograph, I have about two millimeters of space there, so it should be adequate space that we can have a highly aesthetic restoration when we finish. So there's the three crowns with the gutter perch placed. But we're going to have a problem when we get to that first bicuspid. So as we zoom in, you can see that the metal is right to the occlusal rim. So there's very thin porcelain that separates that metal from the occlusal surface. There's the pre-treatment photo, and you can see where the metal is exposed from the bite adjustment from the dentist. So this is going to be the challenge is how do we get this so that it has a decent aesthetic result. And our expectations have to be lowered because of this challenge. Now after we've placed the gutta percha, we're going to etch the porcelain with hydrofluoric acid. This is a 9% hydrofluoric acid from Cosmodent. They call it their composite etchant, but it's actually a good porcelain etch, 9% hydrofluoric acid for 3 to 4 minutes. We're going to rinse and dry thoroughly after the 3 to 4 minutes. We're going to use a silanator or silane to silanate the porcelain. This is silanator by Cosmodent. We're going to place multiple coats and leave on for about a minute, and then we'll air dry, followed by an unfilled resin, which is the uh, Cosmodent Complete unfilled resin, which is our adhesive for our composite. We'll place a thin coat of the Cosmodent Complete, air thin, and like here for 20 seconds. So now we're ready to actually start the restoration. We're going to use the pink opaque or from Cosmonet's Creative Colors first. With an artist brush, we're going to be painting a thin layer of the pink opaque, and we want to line the metal rim and onto the gutta percha. Ideally, we're going to create a pink interface that's going to block out that metal rim, but some of that metal still may shine through, as you can see in the photograph. The challenge again is going to be that bicuspid where there is essentially very thin porcelain to no porcelain between the occlusal table and the metal substructure. So you can see where the metal is still highly visible despite our pink opaqueing. In the illustration you'll see I have gutta percha that's just below the metal rim. I'm going to place a layer of pink opaqueer that's going to be about two to three tenths millimeters thick and I'll light cure that for 20 seconds. The next material I'm going to use is the opaquer that matches the Vita shade of the crown. So in this case we have an A2 Vita shade crown, so we're going to use the opaquer A2-A2.5 from Cosmonet's Creative Color. So we first opaque out the molar crown, and you can see that the color is starting to blend with the surrounding color of the porcelain. 
As we get to the bicuspid though, we're going to see we're still challenged, and though we've gotten a little color influence, it's still the value is kind of low. It's looking a little dark. You see the difference between the molar and the bicuspid. So in our illustration we show putting the A2 opaque on top of the pink opaque, again about two tenths of a millimeter thick, over the gutta percha and over the metal rim. That's like here for 20 seconds. After the two opaques are placed, it leaves us with about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half of space for our nano composite. So the illustration or the photograph on the left shows a nano composite in place. And we're going to build up in increments to create the proper morphology. Once that composite is cured, then we're going to go back and we're going to add some tints to the occlusal surface. This is the light brown and dark brown tints from the Creative Color System so that we can start to create natural looking aesthetics to blend in with the porcelain crowns. As you look at the photograph though, you'll notice that the seal for the first bicuspid is looking kind of gray. So I actually went back Reprepped that area and reopaked it and relayered my nano composite and my tints, and I think we got a better outcome on that second go around. So we look at the preoperative image on the right. You can see the adjustment of the porcelain through the metal on the first bicuspid, and then in the photo just, just left of that right photo, you can see the final images. Well, I want to thank you for joining us for the Cosmonauts Tip of the Month. And for anyone interested in gaining more experience in direct resin composites, I'll be teaching a course in Chicago at the Center for Aesthetic Excellence on April 11th and 12th, 2013. If you'd like more information on the composite coaching, hitting home runs with direct resin, click on the link provided below. Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you soon.